Hi folks, welcome to Build Plug O. So I wanted to do a quick video on the choices we made on the oxygen system installation uh, for our RV pen. Um, you guys are aware that we're using the Mountain High built-in system, the, the EDS 4IP, and uh, it includes a cylinder that goes in the aircraft, a regulator, some other parts, and then tubing that goes forward to the display that uh, usually will go on the uh, airplane panel, and then some distribution units that go near where the people sit. So let's take a peek at the first part of uh, our installation, which is the cylinder in the back and the regulator in those parts. All right, so let's take a peek at the mounting of the system, um, sort of the, the parts that we made uh, for our setup and uh, sort of the choices around here. So the kit comes with the, the initial kit for the Mountain High setup, um, comes with a cylinder, a regulator, a fill port, and these bands and the mounting brackets. The choice, one of the big choices that we made that is different from stock here is we've requested that we get a cylinder with a valve on it and a separate regulator. The reason for this is getting fills at our local scuba shop is about 10 bucks for an oxygen fill versus if we go with an FBO, I've heard everything from 50 bucks to 150 bucks uh, for an oxygen fill. Of course, it is a lot more convenient for the FBO to come because they're just going to plug into the fill port and just fill you on the spot. So we didn't want to lose that possibility, right? If we're on the road and we need to fill, we can just use the, the FBO, the regular FBO fills. Um, but when we're home, I would want to save myself, you know, 50 plus dollars and just remove the cylinder, take it to the scuba shop, get it filled. Not all scuba shops can do 100% oxygen. It's usually scuba shops that cater to technical divers uh, that can do that. And, you know, of course, call ahead. Um, you might also need an adapter uh, for the DIN valve uh, that comes, uh, is available for these cylinders to whatever the scuba shop has. And you can buy those online or Mountain High might be able to uh, get you an adapter as well. Um, so what happens then is the se three separate pieces, we need to figure out how to mount these, right? Um, one of the choices we made was we wanted the cylinder mounted to the bottom of the airplane and we have it attached to the J channels here. Uh, the, the J channels go front to front to back on the fuselage. Um, of course, this is not a stock mounting point, right? There is no stock mounting point for this. So anything we do is a modification from the plans effectively. What this means is you have to take into account, if you choose to do something like this, you have to take into account what does this do to the structure of the airplane? Because we're drilling a bunch of holes in the J channels, right? To rivet those those angles um, and we're putting you know weight on them. Um, you should uh, make your own decision about this. I am not an engineer. I don't know, uh, you know, <laughs> we could have done something terrible here. I don't think so, um, but I am not an engineer. Um, so make those decisions on your own. Talk to your experts and figure that out. <laughs> anyway, so the other part of this is the bracket over there for the, for the regulator. Um, this is a stock Vans bracket. I believe they call it the strobe bracket or the... Uh, ELT bracket. Uh, there is nothing special about that bracket. It is actually mounted in exact, the exact spot that Vans wants you to mount it. Um, the thing that we did here was I made a piece of angle, actually a fairly thick piece of angle, that uh, attaches to that bracket and has a hole in it so that I can put that regulator in place there. I did fill, put nut plates behind two of the nut plate spots in the bracket, which I'm going to use for uh, sort of attaching the wiring for this. Uh, when we get to it, you'll see that there's a DB9 connector uh, on one side of the regulator. So there is some wiring that goes there uh, that goes forward to the panel, uh, to the control head for the oxygen system. Um, so it's a, you know, just a nice spot to, to sort of affix wiring so that it's not flopping around. And then the other part is uh, we made a bracket and a doubler uh, to mount the fill port uh, over here on the baggage bulkhead. There's a hundred different places you can put this. There's no, well, I'm, 
I'm sure there's a right answer and many, many wrong answers, uh, but this is what we decided to do with. Keep in mind that Vans is not a fan of uh, us cutting holes in this baggage bulkhead. Um, it is considered a structural part of the airplane. Um, so again, run this by Vans. Uh, you know, make your own decisions on if you're comfortable making that, that hole there. Um, what we did was I fabricated a doubler. Uh, so I did cut a hole in there and then I made a doubler that attaches to the baggage bulkhead. It's riveted onto the baggage bulkhead that stiffens it up. Um, and, uh, you know, my hope is that that is sufficient to stiffen this up. We have seen airplanes out there with uh, other modifications that have, uh, you know, holes in these bulkheads. Um, so, uh, personally, I am confident that the airplane is not going to fall out of the sky <laughs> because of uh, a, what is it, two inch by three inch hole in the baggage bulkhead with a doubler. But again, uh, this is experimental aviation, right? Uh, we make our own choices about risk, and uh, this was one that I was. I was personally comfortable with, but make your own choices. Um, one of the big design criteria for me on this was I wanted to make it so that I could still easily remove the baggage bulkhead for inspections, right? I don't want to ever make a modification or make a change that makes it harder for me to do inspections, harder for me to do maintenance. Um, it should always go the other way. So what we did was because I, I didn't want to have a bunch of screws holding this on that would add, you know, add a bunch of time and, and complication to um, getting back here, we did it a, a slightly different way. So the mounting bracket has three mounting points. There's that one on the top with a nut plate. There's another one on the bottom over here with a nut plate, you can barely see it. And then there's two more nut plates over on the end. And you'll notice that top and bottom are attached to the baggage bulkhead, but the two over there are actually attached to this frame piece that the baggage bulkhead screws into. What that means is I can remove the baggage bulkhead by just removing those two screws, and of course the baggage bulkhead, baggage bulkhead screws, and that fill port will stay in place and it won't flop around. It won't just be one more thing that I have to worry about dealing with, right? So I can run my hoses, you know, nicely from there to there. There's gonna be a 90 degree uh, port right there. From there to there, um, and it can be, you know, not a huge hose that's gonna flop around because I need it to, to have flexibility for removing that. It's gonna be a nice and tight uh, setup. So let's take a peek at the front real quick. Okay, so the other design criteria for this was I wanted to be able to use that fill port and for it not to be uh, horrendous to get to or ugly. So we used quarter turns over here, which means I can use a screwdriver. It's just a quarter turn. It doesn't usually make that clank. It's just because the, uh, the, the bulkhead is mostly loose. There's only three screws holding it in place. So little quarter turns. Um, these are Skybolt quarter turns. Uh, Skybolt uh, is the company that makes also the cowling fasteners. They make these quarter turn fasteners that I'm using here. They're really nice. Um, Skybolt has not sent me these for free or anything like that. I just like using their, their stuff. So as I mentioned, just two screws and then I can remove that or I can just remove the plate and then um, an FBO can just tap into here and fill it and we can see uh, it being filled and it, uh, you know, looks good, it's all set. Looks pretty nice, is easy enough to install, uh, to, you know, open and close. Let's take another peek from a different angle over here. Let's see if this camera is going to cooperate. There we go. Okay, so there's one screw two over here, and uh, then there's the one on the other side. So I would just remove the top and bottom, and this would stay in place, and then I can access everything else. Uh, the regulator right there again, and then there's the cylinder. So we again, we wanted to keep things simple. So what we would do if we needed a fill and we were home is we would climb into the airplane through the the baggage door, which I've done now numerous times when the canopy was on. Of course, now the canopy, with the canopy off, it's easier to access. You then remove the, the two top, top and bottom baggage bulkheads, covers, um, and then get in here, of course, close the valve, unscrew the, the, the hose from it, cap the hose, right? You always want an oxygen set up clean. And then these two little quick, quick releases, very easy to use. 
and let me try not to drop this. There we go. Let me put it down. Okay. And there, there it is. Uh, it is out. And this actually gives us a chance to take a peek at this, right? So I mentioned there were two pieces of angle. There's one here, one here. There's a plate. The angle is uh, riveted to these J-channel stringers. And it has nut plates on it where this plate is attached to. And the plate itself has four nut plates to attach to the, the brackets that come from Mountain High. Keeping it simple, um, I've oversized uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> Again, because I don't know how to do the structural math on this, right? Like I'm not an engineer. So I've oversized it. Uh, I had uh, Mountain High sort of review the installation and uh, shot them an email to just get the okay that everything looks good. And uh, I'm also asking them to just take a peek at this video before I post it just to make sure that everything seems sane, right? Like I never want to post anything that um, isn't going to work for me. But here it is. Uh, that is the Mountain High uh, EDS 4IP uh, install. Um, it's the four place setup, uh, the post demand setup. We're going to be doing more videos of this setup as we go. Uh, full disclosure, Mountain High did give us a discount on the system um, in exchange for us making some videos of the install. Uh, I do, I am very particular, and I have told people this, that I don't take gear uh, that I wouldn't originally have bought anyway, right? So if I wasn't planning on buying the Mountain High system, I would not have taken the discount to make the videos. Okay, thanks as usual. More videos to come. And uh, definitely another deep dive on the Mountain High uh, setup as we do the wiring and we figure out the placement of the distribution blocks and, and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.